I've never preached from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews is about the Jewish people, mostly. And it's about the writer exhorting them that there's a new king. There's a new high priest. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to have to stick up here and not get off this podium much because I have to take notes. But I believe God's helped me to see some things that, you know, we're not the only ones that do that. They did that in the past. And as, as they were trying to get many of the, the, the Jewish believers to come from out of Judaism into Christianity. And I think, and Brother Ralph has taught this through, through our Bible studies, that it takes diligence. It takes diligence. You know, if at first you don't succeed, try again. And as the writer, my Bible says, just so you know, he proves. So he's supposed to get up and make your coffee in the morning because he heard the Bible says so. Okay? My Bible says the epistle of Paul, but Paul didn't write this, and it goes on to tell why. The actual terms was pro abracious, and which actually means to the Hebrews. So if, if I'm not mistaken, the writer of this exhortations or these letters are not, the, the writer was not known. Some say Paul wrote it. Some say Luke wrote it. I've heard all kinds of things. But anyway, I'm just trying to give you a little class lesson there. The writers of the Hebrews, they were, they were trying to get them to convert to Christianity, but not so much in the lesson today, but they wanted to look back. They wanted to go backwards when it got hard and when they faced persecutions and when they faced trials, they wanted to turn around and go back. No, no, but we don't like this. And we know that the human flesh does not like to go through anything bad. The same reason that, that you don't want to do something is the same reason that Jonah ended up in the belly of a whale. And I think of that every time that God says, I want you to do this, and I'm thinking, oh, 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 oh.
and a test comes upon us, are we to look back and say, Jesus took me through this. And it was because, I can't tell you how much that song that he sang right then meant to me to calm my nerves. Because it's by God's grace. You know, we've been bringing this up a lot the last few sermons. By God's grace, I can do this. Or I can do that. Because I know I'm not alone. And that's what the writer is trying to tell these Jewish people. Christ has so much better for you. Why are you doing this? Okay, I want you to turn to chapter... I'm going to start out in chapter 3. We're going to kind of be in 3 and 4. And I think... You know, there's so many churches today... They don't want to preach nothing about the Jewish part of how Christianity came to be. But that's the very reason we have Jesus. It was because of Him. That's the very reason we have the Word of God. It was because of Him. Because we were grafted into them. Just like you take a limb on a tree and you make a little notch and you put another notch in it and you take it up and it starts to grow. That's called a graft. And that's the thing, same thing that God did for us. Only we live under a better covenant than they did. And we're trying to get them to convert to this new covenant. Sometimes we know. Have you ever tried to get somebody and talk to them about Jesus? How hard is that sometimes? Sometimes what do they want to do? They just want to turn around and they want to walk away from you. Amen, brother? So I've asked God some questions, and maybe he answered them here. I'm going to start out in three, and it says, We're four, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle, the high priest of our profession, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, keep in mind, he's trying to win these Jews over to Christ. Who was a faithful to him that appointed him, and also Moses was faithful in his house. Yes, Moses done many great things. And me, like Moses, don't think I'm a great speaker. Moses thought the same thing. He didn't think he was a great speaker. But look at how many wonderful things that he done because of God's grace being with him, and he believed in God, and he trusted in God, and God took him through. Amen? So keep that in mind. He goes on in verse 3, For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is more worthy than Moses. Because he created Moses. Yeah. He created Moses. It says, For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in the, all the house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after. See, Moses was faithful. That's all God calls us to be. He wants us to be faithful to Him, and by His grace, He can accomplish the things in our lives that He wants us to accomplish. And we often do the same thing that these Jews did. We want to, when things get hard, we want to stop, we want to turn around, and we want to go back to that day when it was easier. Amen? How many know that Ricky Gray has probably done that at least one time in his life? We always want something easy. What do you think Moses felt like when he was standing there at the Red Sea? What do you think his nerves were like? Did you think he was scared? Raise your hands. If 
He stayed faithful to what God called him to do. Do you all hear that? He stayed faithful and he did what God called him to do. He didn't stand there and ask 47 questions like Ricky Gray did. He didn't ask God, why, why, why? Are you sure, God? Of course he's sure. He's God Almighty. He's God Almighty. He's, of course he's sure. He doesn't have to second guess himself. And he is a God that cannot lie. So he didn't take Moses there to drop him off, Brother Danny. He didn't take him there so Pharaoh could run him out into the ocean and kill him. So why is why are we the same just like these Jewish people were doing? Now we're not going to get into all that today. This is just an overall summary of what these chapters are about. Why did Moses go there? Why did he go there and do that? Because he trusted God. He knew that God sent him there. He knew that God told him to go get my people out of Egypt and deliver them. And he did just that. He delivered them. Out of the land of bondage. Why? He trusted what God told him to do. He trusted God. I'm sure he had his days. We can read the Bible and know that he had his days. He went up on Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, and he came back down and they're worshiping an older calf again. How do you think he felt then? He was mad. He was angry. But he knew he'd done what God told him to do. And we get a little deeper down into this. I want to go start at verse 6 of chapter 3. But Christ has the Son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence, the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. All we have to do is walk in God's grace. Hallelujah! Walk in God's grace and He will take us to where we need to get to. Just like He did Moses. He took Moses to that Red Sea because God Almighty knew that I'll part that Red Sea when I get him there and I'll walk him through it on dry land. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And He knew that He had sent ten plagues to Pharaoh. He knew that Pharaoh was
차고 Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Harden not your hearts. See, Lord, why do people walk away from you? That's what I ask you. Why do people walk away from you? They walk away from God because they've let the devil harden their heart. Why? Well, pride is one thing that can harden your heart. Ask Pharaoh. Well, you can't ask Pharaoh, but that's what he had in him. He was full of pride. He would not lay down and do what God told him to do. So God just kept pouring new plagues on him, and he wouldn't listen to that. I think there was ten of them all together. After I'd been through ten plagues of what he went through, I believe I would stop and listen, don't you? Then why don't we always listen to God? We need to listen to God. If God is doing something in your life, don't do that. Stop doing it. And I'll be honest with you. There's things in my life that God says, I don't want that in your life anymore. And I'm slowly working them out. He's been patient with me. It's because of His grace. The only reason I'm standing here right now is because of His grace. And I've prayed, prayed, prayed over this. Lord, I'm scared to death. And that's the things that we think of. It's what God's Word said. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And then we have a man come in here that has no idea what this sermon's about. And he sings Amazing Grace. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. See, when we get in that rough spot, when we get in that spot where we've been tempted, where we want to turn back, and look at the old good times. Well, those old good times weren't so good when I was drunk as could be, and I was in a wreck, and I lay flat on my back for two and a half months, didn't know if I was ever going to walk again. Why would I want to go back and look at that? Why would you want to go back and look at something like that? The only thing I want to do is thank God that He brought me through that. See, God's grace, He looked into my future, and He said, I can make something out of you. And He looked into Ralph's future, He said, I can make something out of you. And He looked into Dorothy's future, and He says, I can make something out of you. And like that song said, those three Hebrew boys, they had faith. They had faith. And by God's grace, God didn't send the angel to come and get in the fire with him. He came himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God comes himself sometimes. He don't send angels. He comes himself. Hallelujah. So when you hear God's voice, when the things of life, this is a big one. And I have to address it. When someone loses a child, who is the first person that 95% of them blame? God. What does that do in their life? It hardens their heart. <coughs> Harden not your heart. And the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, to guard your heart with all diligence. That means with everything you have in you. That means what you let in here comes here. But actually it starts here and comes out here. That makes sense. One of the things... I hate to say this, but I, I, have, I have to tell this. This is about Daryl Rick. Brother Danny told me, you got some pride in you. I said, what? That's ridiculous. I'm the most humble person I could ever try to be. He said, why did you go cut food pantry down there and get cut food? I said, because somebody else needs it worse than I do. 
NATO and it was her. And, and in all reality, 90% of that, or not 90%, probably half that stuff gets thrown away anyway. He said, Ricky, don't get on her for that. I said, Danny, we don't need that. He said, that's pride, Ricky. I said, no, it ain't. Because how can it be pride when I know somebody else needs it worse than we do? How can that be pride? He said, that's pride. Well, he finally convinced me that it was. Okay, I shouldn't tell this, but I have to, because God told me to, and I'm going to. Am I ashamed of it? Yes, I am. See, I'm not afraid to admit when I do something wrong. And we none of us should be afraid of it, because that's how we learn. That's how God teaches us. Y'all know I'm an avid gardener, and this is off base a little bit, but this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Y'all know that I'm an avid gardener. Every one of you here know this. Well, God is not, Ricky's not the gardener, God is. All Ricky does is plant it, throw a little fertilizer on it, and I get down on my face in that garden, and I ask God to bless it, and I ask Him to make it bountiful. People that drive by down the road with my hind end stuck up in the air and my face in the dirt probably wonder, what in the world is that man doing? I'm asking God to bless my garden, to make it beautiful and to make it mouthful. That's what I do. People say, oh, you're such a great gardener. Oh, no, 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 not. God is. Can I make it rain? Can I make it grow? Can I create it? Of course not. So that's what I do. Anyway, on to the, on to the main point. I, 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 just, I love to grow potatoes. I love to grow potatoes. One year I grew them, and I'm, I'm telling you, they were the biggest softballs. I grew one that year, two and a half pounds, and I grew one, two and a quarter pounds. I got pictures of them. I got proof, and I got them on the scale. I got them. I'll show them to you. Table full of them. And didn't even get from here to there. And I had three rows that was twice again that long. There was 265 feet of them all together. Anyway, I dug all these potatoes and we had potatoes. And I gave potatoes away. And on and on it went. And, and it was awesome. Next year, Ricky Gregg will have potatoes. So it comes time to get potatoes. Got potatoes to spread around. Promise you. Am I lying? Am I lying? What you tell me to do? You told me to go dig them. I said, I ain't digging them worth the time. I ain't going to dig them. I ain't going to worry about it. Okay? What was that? That was pride. I've grown potatoes this big around. I ain't going to mess with these little baby marble sized and golf ball sized potatoes. I ain't going to do that. It ain't worth my time to dig them. Okay, here comes your number after that. Same thing. They were just a little bit bigger. I ain't messing with that. I ain't going to worry about it. Some of the rows didn't even have any in it. Some of the plants didn't even grow out of anything. I don't know what went wrong, but I think I do. I think I was being looked upon by God. What's he going to respond to? How's he going to respond to this? And I responded exactly the way that human flesh would respond. I ain't going to mess with that. And it hit me one day. Man, I missed the big potatoes. And I learned, I finally realized what I'd done. And I said, oh Lord God, I'm so sorry. That I wasn't grateful enough to go get what you gave me. God said, be thankful in everything. I went and I repented. And this year, when I started digging them, they started coming out of the ground about that big ground. I said, thank you, Jesus. I love these things. They taste so good. In the bucket it went. And then I ran on to some marbles. And in the bucket they went. Thank you, Lord. I love these things. They're so good. I put them in the bucket. In the bucket. And the farther and farther and farther I got, the bigger and bigger and bigger they got. And he said, I had mercy on you. Because I repented. And by the time I got to the end of the road, 
road and just figure it out. But they didn't start out that way. That's pride. And if you let pride into your life, it can harden your heart. That's exactly what happened to Pharaoh. I know I got off track a little bit, but I just wanted to get you to realize what pride can do to you. Pride can harden your heart real quick. How many people out there you know are too prideful to come to church? Because they don't want nobody telling them how to live. That happens a lot. Let's get back to the message now. Okay, let's go on. Verse 8. Harden not your heart, as in the provocations in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. How many, ever, how many of you ever felt like you was having a wilderness experience? Probably everybody in here. See, so we have to be careful when we're being tried and we're being tempted. We have to lean on God's grace. We have to lean on God's grace. And in verse 9 it says, When your fathers tempted me, you never want to tempt God. There's one place in the Bible that God said tempt me, and that was in tithes and offerings. That's when he said, See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that your barns cannot contain it. He says, when your fathers kept to me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years, they saw God taking care of them in the wilderness for 40 years, but it wasn't good enough for them. They got mad out they wanted me, and so on and so on. They were growling and complaining about everything that was going on in their life, so they wanted to turn and go back. Moses, what have you done to us? So that's what he, that's, that's the specific time he's talking about now. And he says, wherefore I was grieved with that generation. I was grieved with that generation. The one thing that the New Testament tells us to do is grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. When he's leading you and guiding you, follow him. Because he'll lead and guide you to all truth. This is what God did. So I swear my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. See, when the day finally came, they didn't all get to go into the promised land. But the ones that were faithful did. Because God said, I swear my wrath. Once God swears something, He's going to do it. So his wrath poured out on their unbelief. Amen. He goes on in verse 12. He says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in you an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is evil. All these people out here that don't believe in God, don't believe in Christ, can be their Savior and save their soul, they're in unbelief. God said that's evil. Amen? In departing from the living God. Because of their unbelief. This is why people walk away from God. See, when you ask God a question, you can bet your sweet biffies that He's going to answer for you if you get in the Word of God and, 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 and get with God. They walked away because of their unbelief. See, this is another thing. Jesus told us about the seed and the sower. Sometimes the seed, people get the seed and they just get so happy and, and, and before they get out the door, the devil's took it away from them. Because it was sown on the wrong soil. See, I know as a gardener, when you sow seed in good, rich, fertile soil, and Ralph will testify to this, a little chicken poop goes a long way, honey. And it just makes stuff just boom. 
See, when, you, when, when the Holy Spirit calls someone to Christ, listen and follow them. But a lot of people don't do that. They have an emotional experience. But they don't have a Holy Ghost experience. When the Holy Ghost goes knocking on your door, let me in. Let him in. I know you all here have done that. But wherever this goes to, they might not know that. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. When God calls you, let him in. Let him stay there. Walk in his grace. You're not going to come to him perfect. Do you think Moses was perfect? Moses was the first one to tell God he wasn't perfect. He wasn't a good speaker. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. And so on, so on, so on. God said, you're my man. How did he do it? He did it through God's grace. Because God was with him. <coughs> Even though he's scared. You know he was scared. It's our human nature. You see, that's what God told him. Look back and see what all I've done for you. That's the only reason you need to be looking back. Because I took you through that back there. And I took you through this right here. And I took you through this right here. And I took you through this right here. And on and on it goes. That's supposed to build your faith in God. But exhort one another daily. Dorothy calls my wife every day and gets her pumped up. While it is called today. Because you're not promised tomorrow. I'm not promised tomorrow. Amen. But exhort one another daily. Now listen to why. Unless any of you. Be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin can make your heart hardened. And God's grace is what brought us out of that sin. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. To be our Savior. That's what he's trying to sell these Jews. He's trying to tell them that Jesus Christ is much better than Judaism. It's a much better covenant. He died one time and one time for all. But when they was tempted and when things got rough, they want to turn around and go back. Isn't that our human nature when we want to go back? Let's get back where it was easier. It's not exactly in this chapter, but it is in this book. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. So have to have it here on my pen and paper. It is an action or a speech that makes someone annoyed or angry, especially if deliberate. For some, when they had heard, did not provoke. How about not all? by Moses. But with whom was grieved forty years was it not with them that had sinned? Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? They died in the wilderness because of their unbelief, because of what they was going through when Moses delivered them out of Egypt was hard. And they let it take their life because they wouldn't believe. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. I probably better cut this off. I, I got more and I would love to go into it, but it'll, it'll be too long if I go that route. And I don't believe you. Second. Yes.
see unbelief. Danny, you've had friends throughout your lifetime that absolutely did not believe in Christ. They're in unbelief. They're in unbelief. That's why God let their carcasses fall in the wilderness and die. Because they didn't believe. And for you and I today, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, and whoever hears my voice out there, the Lord Jesus Christ and God's grace is much better than what the Jews had. Can I hear an amen from everyone? Amen. Do you want to go slaughter cows, bulls, and goats, and offer them once a year, and go through all the things that they went through? No, I don't. No. Now, all that stuff's interesting, and all that stuff leads to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. Every page of that Old Testament is leading up to Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you today, if God is calling you, if you can hear His voice to let Him in, I encourage you to let Him in. Call on Him while it is today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Don't let that call fall on stony heart and walk out of here and five minutes later you've lost it. Stony ground. Because you have a God that is full of grace. He's full of mercy. No matter what sin you've done, no matter what you've done, if you ask God to forgive you for it, He will have mercy on you, He will forgive you for it, and He will throw it as far as the east is from the west, never to remember it again. Say that loud, sister, for the ones in the back. Hallelujah. See, we need to be careful because we can learn from what they did. We are to guard our hearts with all diligence. It's what you see, it's what you do, it's what you say, all that stuff. We hate the things God hates. We love the things God loves. But if you hear Him knocking at your door, let me in. Let Him in. You don't have to be perfect. Moses wasn't perfect. And I sure ain't perfect. And I'm sure Moses was a lot better than I'll ever be. But see, it's God's grace. You're walking in the grace of God. The most evil man that's out there that's alive is walking in God's grace because God is allowing him to be alive. So my, go ahead, Mike. My prayer is for anyone that needed to hear this, for anybody out there that you feel like God is speaking to you, if you can hear his voice, let him in. You don't have to be perfect. I don't care what kind of sin you've committed. I don't care what you've done. God will forgive you for it if you truly repent from it. Because all those that are growing into Christ are a new creation in Him. He went to the cross for you and me and the world. He shed His blood on a cross. He died a cruel death because He loved me and you. Do you think that He knew we'd be perfect? Going on to perfection does not mean being perfect. It means being mature. Being a mature Christian. And as we go deeper into the book of Hebrews, it deals with that stuff. You see, you can walk in God's grace today. You can do away with all that sin today. Right today. If you hear my voice, you can get rid of that sin today. If you'll let Jesus Christ into your heart. Because He'll give you a new heart. Because in the book of Ezekiel, I'm not sure what chapter, but I remember this from Bible study. 
study. God told them that I'll take that stony heart out of them and I'll give them a heart of flesh and they'll be my people and they'll serve my and keep my statutes. God can give you a new heart today. How many need heart surgery that's out there hearing my voice? How many look, David prayed diligently, Lord, look at my heart. Is there anything in there that I need to get rid of? And we, we as Christians, I know everybody in this building is saved. But we as Christians need to guard our heart. And we need to ask God, if there's something in there, reveal it to me that I might get it out. David said, I wrote your word on the tablet of my heart that I might not sin against you. So I'm asking you today, if you don't know Christ, and He's calling, and you can hear His voice, don't be afraid. Don't turn back. Don't go back into that life that you came from. If you let him in, just stay with him. Walk with him. You don't have to be perfect. And if you mess up, just go to him and tell him, I messed this up. I'm sorry. I repent of it. And get up and go again. His mercies are new every day. He don't want you to die and go to hell. He wants you to walk in his grace. Can I make that any plainer? He wants you to walk in His grace. Not being perfect. And maybe that's why I'm in this message. I don't know. But God's grace is sufficient for all of us. Not just Paul. These tears that run from my eyes know that God shed His grace on me. He knows every evil thing I've ever known. And he still said, come here, Ricky, I love you. And he loves every one of you. And he loves every one of you out there. I plead with you, somebody needs to hear this. It is on my heart so heavy. Somebody needs to hear this. 